if it's the boot that comes here on the booze that bring me to the back tab of the back that I've been experimenting for quite a while. I've recorded a few playtest videos with it. Uh, and this is what essentially it came down to. Uh, it's not so much as like elves like right now, it's more of a gem aggro deck. Uh, I ran this like at uh, uh, just this list as at an FNM and then at uh, uh, Grand Prix trial like this past weekend, uh, the weekend of Lip Call Tour. And I'm willing to uh, bring this to my local game day as well. So let's start with the mana base. Uh, basically, you can go like straight black green, but because of fetchness and the new uh, dual lands, uh, you really want to like use that opportunity. So that's why I'm playing one of each um, new lands, so one small deer marsh, one uh, cinder glade. So that uh, place out of like wooded, uh, wooded foothills and blasty marsh, each can essentially fetch me up like a black or green source so uh, and at this point the red splash becomes pretty much free and that opens up like a lot of opportunities than just staying on black green elves but for budget reasons like you can of course stay on on that route just play straight black green and then you don't really need to use up fetches on these new dual lands and I would talk about like how I see that kind of build of black green elves like uh, overall, uh, and of course like you need some swamps and some forests, and of course like you're gonna uh, because you're pretty much a two color deck, uh, we're using the place out of Flanderer waste like the pale lands from the core set like to fix our mana, and we're running uh, only. Uh, three forests and six swamps here simply because you want the mm, black on turn one because of uh, your two places of one drops and land four land warriors also help that and a lot of the time you don't need like double green until late and also like the trapper helps you to fix like double green for example or get you an extra green source and because of cards like uh, Drana as well, uh, and Hardeman, like the uh, Chester Death Dealer, like you want a lot of black, but the most importantly, you want as many turn one like black sources as you want untapped. So that's why the mana base is like this. So 23 lands, happy so far. Um, it's been okay. I don't want to like go below, and probably don't want to go more than that. And then your one drops like one warden, which is uh, just basically a mana sink, just an extra one drop. You don't really need more in this list because you have like two uh, other places of one drops. That's the Thornbow Archer and the Trapper. Trapper uh, is a very important card on this deck because um, not only it's a mana dork, it also allows your Tekanos to gain death touch. So that means that you can attack through Mantis Sliders through an offenses, through rhinos, through all the big creatures and then they will have to trade with your like one one elf or something like this. Archery is okay, plus so champion is a better card but you need a lot of elves like to abuse the synergies in this deck and one of the best openings is like one of these one drops and turn one and turn two you go into like uh, your two drop territory with uh, Dwayne's al ally so and you get like a lot of bodies and play very early and then if you if your one drop was a trapper then when you attack like it, it makes everything very uh, uneasy for them and a lot of people will forget that this guy can actually give death touch to your attacking elf so they uh, uh, the likelihood of them falling into that trap is very big so you have your two drop like four of elvish visionary um, just a two drop elf like draws your cards uh, because of the trapper uh, you can utilize it as a, like an attacker, something that uh, trades with their creatures. And also because of a lot of comps and a lot of uh, basically ways to use a bunch of small creatures uh, later on with your uh, uh, high drops, visionary is okay. Uh, and then we coming to Red Chest of the Dealer, you have a 2 drop. Really been impressed by this card. 
Uh, yes, it's a little bit weak to cards like Fury, Impulse, and Well Slash, but once you have mana untapped, then it's very uh, uneasy for them to do. And it's definitely gonna hit a Soul Trap as soon as possible because it's a very scary card. A lot of the time, when you're playing against a mid range deck with a lot of big creatures and a lot of expensive removal, if they kept it on check and then uh, let's say you cite it uh, in uh, like your murderous cusp where there is Citranos and whatnot, then uh, actually uh, you can deal a huge amount of damage just with that one card that is really uh, underrated. And I think it's a very underrated card right now. You don't see anybody really playing it. Uh, and I just like it way more than uh, Beast Caller or Leaf Gilder or uh, Zulporid Cutthroat. This deck is much more temper oriented, it's uh, way less on like the abusing all the possible symmetries. It does have quite a few, but you're more of a beatdown deck and just, you just want to kill as fast as possible. Uh, and Zulaporids like without sacrifice outlet doesn't really do a whole lot in this deck and um, on the contrary Dark Dealer is just a very solid two trap uh, you don't really want to ramp up that much with like Gilder or Base Caller you don't need uh, that but you want uh, some threat which is like really scary on its own uh, Shaman of the Pack is basically the reason to play this deck. Uh, great uh, free drop, the stats on it are quite great. Like, we still have a pretty high elves count in this deck, so it works quite fine. Um, there is no rally, uh, rally the Ancestors in the deck, so it's not a, a, a huge deal, so it's not like insanely amazing. Um, but it's it's very solid, so it's just um, a huge uh, factor that gives you a lot of reach in the late to mi uh, in the mid to late game. Uh, and then one of the other reasons to play this deck: a uh, couple of Chana, Liberator, Malker. Um, big point to notice here is that once you actually get to attack with it, you just put a counter on it pretty much immediately if they don't have an answer because of first strike and then um, it survives through uh, windmade locks, mantis riders, uh, through the slashes and impulses because they can impulse it if like, they have like some spells already in there if spellmaster is on but actually um, I started it uh, out in too many matchups uh, where I shouldn't have done so I'm just uh, a bit underestimating its power, but after a while, after some tests, after some matches, it catches up on you. And uh, because of so many like low drop creatures, Trana can get out of hand pretty quickly. And then your remaining three drop is Touch of the Void, of the basically free red splash. Uh, this card is never bad. It's better than playing like Murderous Cusser, complete disregard in main deck because. It's never that it's can, it, it can always just hit face and finish them off. Also, uh, why it wins over stuff like Disregard or Soul Trap, like because you can actually finish off like Flipped Jace. So, um, that is a very important factor. And then, uh, it's still like Exiles, uh, Exiles Jace, uh, kills Mantis Rider. Exiles, Hanger Backwalker. Uh, so there's a lot of things it can do. It also can finish off Gideon. So that's also an important thing. It's just a card that is never really bad. So that's why I like it. Uh, instead of like some removal and the rest splash is so easy. Um, and then moving on to our, our high drops, like two copies of the Elvish Lord, like the one in uh, Tilt Leaf. Uh, um, it's a great card, you want two copies even though it's legendary uh, because it pumps your team, uh, it gains your life so when against uh, red decks when it attack, gets to attack it gains you so much life that it's pretty hard to actually lose from that point um, It block because of reach it blocks Mantis Rider, it blocks Wind Mantrock um, 
some other things. So fairy toughness is a pretty huge deal. It doesn't die to well slash or impulse. Um, doesn't die like to cards like touch and avoid. Um, so yeah, it really taxes them. It really and it really challenges them. Uh, the other four drop like I'm not playing collect company here. I'm not playing solo messenger because I'm more of a beat down deck and uh, uh, just getting there as soon as I can. Um, and I didn't like cutthroat in this deck because I, I have no ways of like really abusing its power uh, in this build. So I'm playing two copies of brutal horseshoe. That's a three three for four. Uh, when a creature you control attacks, you get to dr actually drain them for one. So the life gain is very important against threat decks as well. But uh, unlike Cutthroat, you just need to attack with your guys. You don't need them to die. So you just can keep on attacking and actually can sometimes finish them off with this drain ability um, despite their blocks. Like, not hoping that some of your creatures would die and finish them off and things like that and uh, you do have like two red sources um, in the deck so the last ability to decide like which way they block is actually possible to activate it because of like all the a fetches and two red sources and because it's five mana and it's um, really like coming up late so you can really get there, so it's possible to activate that ability, but it's basically just a better uh, cut for, for this deck. Um, I wanted another pump, I first had like one Liliana in my deck, but then I settled on uh, Hogan, Storm Tier. Um, it's just a big late game trump. Uh, we saw its power at the Pro Tour when Jacob Wilson just like kept them dashing it in and keeping up these spells and just went that way somehow. Um, so it's just another pump card. It's better than like Trumpet Blast, it's better than um, like some other like pump spells. It's good on its own and because we're not really dependent a huge deal on just having elf, uh, elish like synergies, it's quite okay. Um, and then another great card, which is probably um, much better in heavy elves list with these colors, especially the Tudger War Color. Uh, you have a basically uh, overrun on a stick, like five mana two one. When it comes or whenever light comes in, your whole team like gets plus two plus two until end of turn. It also triggers off the Drana, and. Uh, if you have a build which can really utilize Philiport's Cutthroat uh, pretty well, so it's also a lie, so it also triggers that. But it also triggers off the Beast Caller because Beast Caller is a lie, that's the 2 mana 1 1 haste to mana for two creatures. So it triggers off of that as well. Here it's not uh, hugely amazing, but it can definitely steal some games sometimes. Um, I'd have it in my hands, like, yeah. I would be in a very tricky situation and with just like some small creatures and that guy like I could do like 11 plus points of damage and effectively raised in a very like clunky situation so it can really like win you games out of nowhere. But that wraps up like the main deck configuration uh, for my build uh, for the remaining part of this uh, video concerning main deck uh, sideboarding is on the second part. Um, in the second video, so I want to talk like what you can do if you like don't want to invest into that kind of deck so much and you're fine just playing at your local store, you don't really need to tune up your deck too much for a big competitive event. So, what you do is that um, you probably run like Beast Caller or uh, even just a um, Blue Blue Fielder over Rakshasa. Um, you don't necessarily have to run like Drana. It's actually kind of pricey right now for some reason which I'm not sure. Uh, then, if you're really heavy on elves and you get some beast colors especially, so um, you want to play Silver Messenger instead of like stuff like Brutal Horseshoes and things like that. Uh, so you want to play Messenger. If you um, get your deck uh, 
into more like uh, aristocrat style. So if you have like uh, cutthroats and you've put in non token husks as your other like free drop, um, then you probably want to play Galactic Company. Um, but if you don't want to go with a Trunk, you probably rather should stick with a bunch of like Sylvan Messengers and a way to abuse that kind of card uh, is to play Mud of the Masses um, uh, because Messenger has Trample and if you ha uh, if you constantly just capable of dumping a bunch of like elves into play then Mud is like probably a way to go especially if you don't want to splash red for cards like Touch of the Void um, yeah, there are a lot of other cards you may want to consider if you don't like uh, some of the free drops I mentioned or shown in, th in this video. You, you can also try out uh, Yiva's Force Mage. It's a pretty like best card, especially with a bunch of messengers. You get a lot of value. And sometimes when you don't have like Trapper and you have like small elves in play, um, sometimes you just want to like be able to attack through what they have. And quite often they would have like a free free creature like a raptor or mantis rather so grievous force mage is uh sometimes quite a lot better than um some other free drops you can think of because like it pumps your guy then they kind of have to trade for sure with fewer threats so it allows you to actually keep on attacking in a lot of like really uh tricky situations also another like decent free drop you have to consider, especially if you get to splash, um, is that free mana like elf ally, like that's a two and a green, um, X one, uh no, where is it? Uh X two X plus one. So if you can pay two colors for it as it's a free four. If you are just a two color deck then probably you shouldn't play it because then it's just a two three which is not really exciting, but as a two, uh, a three mana three four, that's exciting enough. Let's see. Um. Also, you could think of like cards like Sigil of Valor. That's an uh, artifact equipment. Cost two, cost one to equip. Uh, when a equipped creature attacks alone and gets plus one one on, uh, plus one one, for each creature, uh, for each other creature you control. So you can put it on an elf token or something, and then you had a bunch of other creatures. So it just allows you to attack through. Then you can think of Warhorn um, if you really want to have like cheap pumps. Uh, obviously, if you're not splashing um, red at all, then in uh, just talking like for a moment about sideboard you want to play like I Blaze Massacre that's a 4 mana uh, minus the 2 for 1 elves if you're really high on elves and also if you're not splashing red then like Minister of Fame is another card to consider I actually also like always wanted to try out but never had the courage but I do find like it's a, a fine card to try out in your uh, in your budget like black green elf stack is the Titanic Grove um also another pump you may consider um the calamance is interesting but you don't have really that many spells and it's much harder to uh, abuse than in like a dark red deck okay folks that wraps up like the main deck possibilities and capabilities so i see you in the next video like talking about sideboarding with this particular build and I'm gonna cover a little bit as well, like what you can do in your sideboard for uh, with a budget version of Darkseid. Okay, see until the next sale. Bye.